I'm, I'm really, really happy to be here. And as you can see, I'm a walking, talking rainbow. Uh, my name is Harish. And irrespective of whether you accept me or not, I know that each one of you is different from me and I accept you the way you are. So if you accept me, you're not doing me a favor, you're returning the favor. So get down your high horses right now. I belong to the land that supports diversity and equality and equity and we speak about these fancy terms. But for all of us, it has taken us some amount of courage that we had to muster to come dressed in the way that we wished to. It took me many years. When I was seven, I was sexually abused by a male relative. And around that time, I became one of the first male survivors of child sex abuse to speak about it. When I grew a little older, I had this conflict with my sexuality. I used to love dressing up in a sari because I used to love Sri Devi. Every time I saw this actress dressed like a serpent, swimming and swindling and all her sexy moves, it changed something in me. I didn't want to be with her. I wanted to be her. And that is what changed in me. I wanted to dress up like her. All through my childhood, all through the years of abuse, I was raped from the age of 7 to the age of 18. All through the years of my abuse, if I found solace in something, it were her movies. Because in the end of every film, she would win over the villain. That is what she did in Chalbaz. That is what she did in Lamhe. She found the love of her life who was, what, 14, 15 years or 20 years older than her. And their age wasn't a barrier. And guess what? I have a partner now and he is 17 years younger than me. So our lives are all tutored by the experiences that we have and not the experiences per se, but what we make of those experiences. I could have cowed down, I could have felt shy, and all my childhood, that's precisely what I did. I dressed up in male clothes. I dressed up in a way that people wanted me to dress up. I walked in a way that, the, that people of my gender, so-called gender that you presumed it is, I decided to walk in a way to fit into your idea of a perfect man. But what is a perfect man? Is it somebody who walks like this? Or is it somebody who keeps his hand like this? What is a perfect woman? Is it somebody who has mamta and love and compassion? Or is it somebody who is determined, boisterous, fighting for her space? Is that a woman? Where do we make these boxes of man and woman, of even transgender? <clears throat> and why do we make these presumptions and put people in boxes. Have you ever, ever traveled by a vehicle, your own vehicle, and you have seen somebody from the Hijra community dressed in a sari, standing in the streets, 
and begging? And how many times have you, your parents, your family, actually said things like, their hands and legs are all right, why can't they pick up a job? Why do they have to beg? And I believe everyone who's watching this on YouTube and everyone who's watching this on TEDx and TED and everyone who's watching this over here in a live audience, you all are good people. You all want to give jobs and opportunities to people who are different. Tell me how many Hijra people have you employed? Have your parents employed? Have your employers employed? How many times have you fought with them to allow people to just come the way they are? Just be the way they are. And you know, every time you up the window, when somebody comes begging, you think that you are pushing them away and protecting yourself. No. It is you who is locking yourself in, in your small thoughts, in your small ideas, in your small templates that we vow to break every day. So yes, my name is Harish and I'm a gender fluid person. I sometimes think of myself as a man, sometimes as a woman, sometimes as both, sometimes as neither. And I don't give you the right to define what my gender is. My gender is what my gender is and I know that. I don't need to tell you. And you have no right to presume. Because when you presume, you make an ass of you and me. I, over the years, I have wanted to work in a space where I find my choice and my voice. A space where I can just be myself without fear. The place where I can just dress up and be who I am. Where I don't have to be bothered about the clothes I wear, the way I look. I can just concentrate on my job. And over the years, when I was actually growing up, when I was much younger, I found it very difficult to find, what, find such a space. So I kept failing in my college. I, my education system, you know, the emphasis on scholars, and I was not one of them. I was not a good public speaker. I used to feel very shy, so I didn't make it to any of those lists either. But I kept at it. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger, and I did try killing myself too. And it made me stronger, because when you, when you realize that there is something that you have been dreading all your life, and you have seen the worst, and you have been pushed to the rock bottom, then that person is somebody you should be scared of because if you push somebody, a Dalit, Adivasi, Muslim, LGBTQ person, a person with disability, a woman, if you push them to the bare minimum where they don't fear of losing anything anymore, then you need to fear them because they will go only to the top and they will go and conquer every little challenge that exists in society. And they will come and stand up in TEDx Indoor and speak about their story. And their story will be the story of the glory of many other untold tales which were waiting to be told. So I stand here not just as myself, dressed in an attire of my choice, the way I like to express myself, I stand here for the struggles of everybody who has had the fear in them because they were not fearing themselves because you create an atmosphere of animosity.
that they couldn't come out and express themselves. But we all do well when we get allies, when people come and support us. So I'm reminded as well of a few people who supported me in this journey. I used to study in a college called Khalsa College in Bombay. And I had a professor called Professor Lakbir Kaur. And she saw that I was this shy, timid child trying to discover their sexuality, sitting in one corner. She saw that energy in me. Then, you know, as Newton's law goes, energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only be changed from one form to another. So that energy was something that she saw, she transformed it, and she put me on stage for the first time. And that was the time when I won all the awards in college. So much so that I loved the college so much that I spent seven years. I also ducked two years. I failed in my 12th and my first year BSc, and I don't regret that. My failures <laughs> are my, my scars are the stars that I hold close to my heart. And those are the best years of my, of my life. So it takes those kind of people who recognize you and they're able to channelize your power that you build in within yourself because of the oppression that you have faced, because of the othering that you have faced all your life. And then I joined the workforce. It took me some time to find the courage to join work because a brutal world out there. But then I joined the workforce and I remember um, after I worked in the event sector, I never joined the formal working sector. I joined the event sector because I thought Ki yahan pe I'll be allowed to be who I am. It's a more open kind of an atmosphere. But then I remember going to one of our clients and the client would look at me and say, Kiari, this person looks gay. This person looks straight. This person behaves like this, talks like this, and gossips and other things is something that you become, you, know, you get so immune to it, you hear it so many times, and you've got so immune to it, that you, that you kind of make it a part of your existence. So every time we look at someone's courage and appreciate that person's courage, also, Turn the mirror a little and look at yourself. Look at yourself to see on why that person had to be courageous. Because you created an environment of hostility. You created an environment of homophobia, transphobia. And that's the reason why the person was courageous. So don't celebrate my courage. Focus on what you could do better. The onus of inclusion lies on those who are included, not on those who are excluded. The ones who are included will have to pave the path for people who are excluded from society. And we don't need equality. Time for equality has gone. We need equity. We need equity. Which simply means, if there are two runners, who both of them are running to the finishing line, and both of them come first, you need to see which of those two, where did they start? Did one start was because of the person's privilege? Did one start two steps further? Were three people two steps behind? You're judging people by the finishing line. You're not judging people by the starting line. So after I reached a corporate space. I recently joined a bank. Since it's the TEDx forum, I'm not be promoting the bank. But uh, I remember one week, you know, after working in the bank, and I went dressed in a boring pink outfit. I think that's the gayest I could be while dressed that way. And. Uh, I go to the bank, after one week there was no problem at all, and after one week, uh, my CHRO, which is the uh, HR head, called me to the room, 
um, she put her hands, she was, she was livid, she was very angry. She was saying, why are you dressed like this? Why are, you, why, why are your shoulders drooping? Why are you not so confident? I saw your photographs, you're so confident. So I said, um, uh, her name is Rajkamal Vempati. So I just looked at her and I said, uh, Raj, but I am confident. I said, it doesn't look like. And then she shut the door, put her hands on my shoulder and she told me, Harish, we hired you not to fit in. Don't become one of us. Be who you are. Stand out. Be who you are. Celebrate who you are. And today, I stand here today because of the allies who supported me at different parts of my journey. So yes, I still have Phobia, I mean, I can't, I've got hairy legs and I can't go without a pant anywhere and I don't want to wax, right? But probably I'll reach there too, pretty soon and express myself completely, wholly and truly. But at this moment, my heart is filled with humility for everybody who stood up with people who are different, different in any form and held the torch for them so that they can walk through their darkness towards light. <coughs> and today, I hold one thing very close to me. I have several titles. I'm a social worker. I'm an impleader in the Section 377 case. I also happen to be uh, working with the bank as a diversity, equity, and inclusion head. I hold several titles and, of course, TEDx speaker, but the title that I hold close to my heart is the fact that I had the opportunity to teach people back, to go to colleges and spaces back and to tell them and to give them the same treatment that my professors gave me, that my professor, Professor Lakbir Kaur gave me, is to go to them and understand where the energy lies hold their hands and pick them up. The people who are sitting out in the corner somewhere trying to hide their face, going up to them in the class and speaking to them and telling them, <coughs> I'm here, I have reached here, I can hold your hand, you can come here, and we can build a better world together. And I see what has pushed you down and I know that what pushes you down is the same thing that will be able to propel you to the top. And that's where I am today. And one of the strongest things that I hold close to my heart is the fact that I also got to teach back. So friends, whenever you find someone in darkness, don't tell them to find the light. Hold the torch for them. Show them the way. Thank you.